The majority of Canada's wine is produced in Ontario, but despite popular belief, only a small fraction is ice wine. Exports are limited, but other countries are gradually discovering the great wines emerging from Ontario, thanks to the region's unique geography, soil and climate, moderated by surrounding lakes. A lot of people have this misconception that we're the Great White North and we have polar bears and Canadian wines within the local population had a very, very poor reputation because they weren't made with the right grapes. And then around 30 years ago, we started to see the first plantings of vinifera and that was the game changer. The French, the Italians, the people in San Francisco, they all grow up knowing they have a great wine region on their doorstep. Torontonians, Buffalo people, they've had to learn that because it's only recent that we've started to make really good wine. We have ideal climate and ideal soil and we're passionate about it. We like to make Canadian wine and we think it's uh, some of the best in the world, so why not go for it? Ice wine represents half of Ontario's exports, but surprisingly totals less than 5% of production. The revolution of dry wines over the last generation has been a hidden secret, as much of it gets drunk in nearby Toronto, North America's fourth largest city. We became famous for ice wine in the late 80s. Uh, it was really almost uh, a fluke that we realized we, we could make ice wine. Soon we discovered that Riesling was a perfect variety for uh, ice wine here in Ontario. While we make delicious ice wine, uh, to get ice wine ripe, um, you need actually pretty ideal growing conditions to get those grapes ripe. The Vintners Quality Alliance ensures that all grapes are exclusively grown in Ontario. At least 85% of the fruit must be sourced from the stated appellation, with sub-appellations requiring 100%. The EQA is a Vintners Quality Alliance of Ontario, and it is the regulator in Ontario for the appellation system for regions of origin and also for a tasting panel for quality assurance for consumers. About a quarter of wines carry the general Ontario designation while around 70% are labeled more specifically as VQA Niagara Peninsula or one of its 10 sub-appellations. There's really two different places, the flat part and the bench. Started 400 million years ago, saltwater sea was here, laid down a whole bunch of sediment to create sedimentary rock limestone. So we have this great limestone base. The key to our appellation is, is two features, the escarpment and the lake. Uh, what the escarpment does is it contains the lake effect. So that uh, coolness in the summer, the warmth in the winter, which radiates from the lake, gets interrupted by the escarpment and then recirculated back. That breeze sends the warm or cool air back again toward the lake and you get this constant recirculation of air. That's the key to our region. The Niagara River flows north from the falls and forms the eastern border of the Niagara Peninsula. The eastern section and its four subregions make up the Niagara-on-the-Lake Regional Appalachian. So Niagara-on-the-Lake is sort of cut off from the rest of the peninsula. It's bordered by the Welland Canal, which is there, Niagara River, which is the continuation of Niagara Falls, and of course the lake itself. It sits the farthest out into the lake. The whole thing is a beautiful, temperate place to grow grapes. The western peninsula is divided into six sub-appellations along a north-facing slope that leads to Lake Ontario. Beamsville, 20 Mile, and Short Hills Bench collectively define the Niagara Escarpment Regional Appellation. Like the Cote d'Or, these mid-slope vineyards are often the most prized. Once you cross over to the other side of the Welland Canal, you're in Escarpment territory it's all bench. The bench is very close to the lake. In Beamsville, you're two kilometers from the lake. So as you go up the escarpment, it's not only the altitude, but it's also the distance from the lake. It's a microclimate for sure. You can sort of dial in what grapes to plant where because of its distance from the lake and the altitude. If you want to make killer Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and Riesling, versions of those grapes that are deft and full of minerality yet fully ripe get a little further from the lake on higher elevation. If you want to ripen big crops of Cabernet Franc reliably, then you should get to more the lakeshore appellations of, of the rest of the peninsula, the western peninsula. A four-hour drive from the Niagara Peninsula, on the northeastern shore of Lake Ontario, Prince Edward County is Ontario's most northern appellation. The region only accounts for 1% of production, but a small number of producers are raising the expectations for cool climate Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. 
Prince Edward County is very different than the rest of Niagara Peninsula. Uh, Niagara Peninsula is dominated with clay and, and dolomitic limestone, uh, whereas Prince Edward County, which is on the North Shore, uh, we have young calcareous limestone, lots of active calcium, tons of rocks in the field. You kind of got to think like Shebley. The challenge that we have, though, is that because we're on the North Shore of Lake Ontario, our winters are really, really tough. Heading southwest from Niagara Peninsula is the Lake Erie North Shore Appalachian, which encompasses the vineyards just southeast of the American city of Detroit. The recently created South Island sub-Appalachian covers the vineyards of Pelee Island in the middle of western Lake Erie. Lake Erie North Shore is the furthest south, very continental, so they get some wicked winters, but they can ripen almost anything, sort of like Niagara on the Lake. Ontario produces about two million cases of wine annually. Almost 50% of it made from Riesling, Chardonnay, and Cabernet Franc. While they currently make up less than 10% of production, there's also growing interest in Pinot Noir and Gamay. Riesling from the Niagara Peninsula is particularly exciting, and among the best New World examples of the grape. Producers' top bottlings will shine for a decade or more. The style of Riesling here is typically slightly off-dry, which is to say a little bit of residual sugar balanced by high acidity. Fans of elegant styles of Chardonnay may be surprised by the quality possible in Ontario's cool climate and limestone soils. The bench Appalachians of the Niagara Peninsula and the northern area of Prince Edward County are particularly noteworthy. You know, there's a, a limestone bench that for a long time people thought that all it was good for was to have Niagara Falls fall from it. Then people sort of realized as they planted the bench that there was great minerality to be had from this limestone. Limestone gives you a kind of uh, perkiness in the wine. It gives you a kind of extra perfume, extra sparkle in the wine. Neither stylistically Burgundian or American, Pinot Noir from Ontario is finding a distinctive expression. I think Pinot is a really, really great varietal here. First of all, uh, the soils, especially Niagara and Prince Edward County, are clay and limestone based. Uh, secondly, we tend to have gentle falls, not super hot, so we maintain our acidity. A hardy grape that thrives in cooler climates, Cabernet Franc is well suited to the region. It makes up 15% of Ontario's production, second only to Riesling. Cabernet Franc works so well in Ontario, A, because its, its winter survivability is amazing, and B, it has so much fruit to it. It's definitely got more of the fruit forward and, and the, 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 the sort of not the mega dense body, but some bright, bright finish to it. Perhaps the most surprising red wine in Ontario is Gamay. Drinkers almost ubiquitously equate the grape with Beaujolais, but on well-exposed sites, Niagara is delivering delicious results that are likely to spark increasing interest. I think there's a little bit more structure to a Canadian Gamay than there would be for Beaujolais. Uh, Beaujolais Gamay, it's, it's driven on that sort of granite sort of structure to it, whereas we have more calcareous soils, so we get more robust character in our Gamay not quite as floral, um, a little bit more darker fruit. And so I think, and you can even get into that slightly peppery character that's really exciting when you, it's sort of similar to a Syrah. So Canadian Gamay to me seems closer to a blend of Syrah and Gamay. While sparkling wine accounts for less than 3% of production, traditional method wines in the hands of the best producers can match the quality of French Champagne. Naturally high acidity and the region's success with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir make this an exciting category to watch. A couple of factors for sparkling wine. First one is limestone soil. That's a, a great way to, to grow Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in particular. So we have those varieties which are well suited to our climate. But the key feature really is acidity. We, we maintain acidity because we have a cool climate. Uh, we ripen well our, our, uh, for table wine, but we can make as much sparkling wine as we desire year in and year out. Canadian wine has been all about ice wine, internationally speaking. I don't think we've exported much outside of ice wine. I think that's about to change. I think we've really identified the, the grape varieties that work best in Ontario. And those are the wines that we're gonna start seeing outside of our borders and making a name for ourselves and realizing how, how great they are. Essentially, I think we have some of the greatest soils 
and in the days of climate change and global warming, having Lake Ontario behind us, we're a lot more stable, we're not warming up as much, and I think everything that we have here and the rise of expertise, the rise of the quality of Canadian wine is just going to continue to grow. Both for the tourist and the serious connoisseur, Ontario has far more to offer than people expect. Today, with an improved grasp of their region's assets and plenty of local pride, Ontario is poised to make its mark on the wine world.